What's going on guys, it's Nas, and welcome to the first episode of a series I'm calling The Nas 5. What I'm basically doing with this series is doing essentially what Stephen A. Smith does on first take with his A-list segment, where he does his top 5s and certain topics in sports. I thought that I wanted to do this because it's a good way to sum up a certain topic related to the NBA by breaking it down simply with 5 points. So obviously as we get closer and closer to the season, I'm going to use this series to make certain predictions and theories for the upcoming season. So with this being the first episode, I'm open to any advice to make this series better with each video, so please give me feedback in the comments, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyways, with today's episode, I'm going to give you 5 players who I believe will be in the conversation for MVP next season. Now look, I know it's only July and anything can happen from now to the start of the season in October, but this is my way too early predictions for MVP. I wanted to do this because I think that there is an interesting case that can be made for multiple players, so I thought that I might as well just break it down to 5. I will make another video about MVPs in a later date, but for now this is just my super early prediction, so I could be totally wrong, so don't hold me to it. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and let's just jump right into it. So at number 5 I have James Harden. Now James Harden this past season was the runner up for MVP and I hope that people don't forget how incredible he was during the regular season. He averaged 36 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists. I mean, that is a ridiculous stat line. And that's not to mention the multiple 50 point games and even the 61 point game. He was one of the top scorers in the league and won the MVP in 2018, so a recent MVP would be in the discussion for MVP, it only makes sense. However, one thing that does hurt his chances for next year at least, is that now he's not the main guy in Houston anymore. With the addition of Russell Westbrook, Harden is going to have to make significant adjustments to his game so that both of these ball dominant players could coexist. I don't think Harden will have the stat line that he had this past season, but he's still an incredible sc scorer and you can't deny that. And if things work out with Russ and the Rockets have a good record, it's not impossible for him to win it next year. At number 4 I have LeBron James. It would be incredibly stupid to not have LeBron in the MVP discussion every year because every year he makes a case for himself and last year was no different. Despite the team's struggles and him missing significant time with injury, LeBron still put up numbers that you would expect from the best player in the NBA. He put up 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists playing 55 games which is the least amount of games he's played his whole career, which is interesting considering the season before he played all 82. Now this year things are different, with the addition of Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, and a deeper bench, this time around the Lakers are no joke. I think LeBron could use this year to basically say you know what, last year wasn't all that, but this time I'm not playing around. He can have a season so great that people can just write off the fact that he missed the playoffs last year and figuratively erase that year. Obviously the Lakers right now have a great shot at winning it all, but if LeBron can A put up his usual numbers that he usually does, B stay healthy cause he is getting older, and C get the Lakers at least the top 3 in the west, then LeBron can easily win MVP. At number 3 I have Mr. Fun Guy Kawhi Leonard. What it do baby? Yeah. I'm sorry, I love that video so much. Now Kawhi Leonard had a very fascinating season. He went from requesting a trade to LA, to being sent to Toronto, to winning them the first ever championship and being loved by an entire country, to just leave and go to LA where he wanted to be in the first place. And let's not forget, with this move, Kawhi with the snap of his fingers has brought balance back to the NBA by going to the Clippers. And now he's in LA with Paul George and a team that's pretty damn scary. The defensive trio of Paul George, Kawhi, and Patrick Beverly should scare the rest of the league. Kawhi averaged 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists during last season. With him finally being in the city he wants, and the team he wants, with another superstar that he was able to recruit, Kawhi can easily have the best season of his career. The Clippers are the favorites according to Vegas to win in 2020, and this is the perfect situation for Kawhi, so I expect him to kill it in the regular season, and with him being a top 3 player right now, I expect him to be in the MVP talks all year. So at number 4, I have the MVP currently, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now obviously he is currently the reigning MVP, so he's obviously going to be the automatic favorite for next year according to the media and betting. Do I even need to talk about last year? He played incredibly well, the team played incredibly well, 
and they are in the East now the favorites, averaging 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists, along with having the best record in the NBA, it's definitely a season to remember. But for this next season, people are going to look at Giannis and the Bucks as the team to beat in the East. With their only competition being the Sixers, the Bucks right now have the best chance to make the finals in the East, adding more pressure on Giannis to turn it up a notch. And for what we've been seeing as of the past few days, he gets it. He's already said that he doesn't want to be called MVP anymore until he wins it again next year. Those are some strong words and the rest of the league should be scared because if he is only just getting started like he himself has said, then buckle up. Now at number one, I have Stephen Curry. Now I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. Stephen Curry will be the 2019-2020 NBA MVP. Why you ask? Well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, with Clay being out for most of the year, and with KD gone, and just Draymond and D'Angelo Russell, Steph is the main guy, and he's going to have to essentially carry this team to make a deep playoff run. Now look, I've been seeing predictions from the media that the Warriors won't make the playoffs, and I think that's just absurd. The Warriors have always been Steph's team from before KD and even now, but this time he has something to prove. And after cruising the two championships with ease, now he'll have to actually like make a case and prove himself and I really think that this year could be incredible for him. I genuinely think that this season will be close to his 73-9 and season and he will ball out. I don't think he'll be the unanimous MVP but I think he'll be the clear MVP. I think that everyone writing the Warriors off in the media and whatnot is just gonna add fuel to the fire and Steph is just going to go insane this year. Don't be surprised if he walks away with his third MVP in 2020. So that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed the first episode of this series, please leave a like. Please comment on what you think I can do to make this series better. I'm looking forward to hearing any criticism and feedback and whatnot. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, just to let you guys know, I will have a video up in a couple of days doing a channel update and also a small announcement about my plans for the future as I try to grow this channel. So look forward for that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more NBA content like this. And if you haven't already also, please be sure to turn on your notifications for new videos. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.